This episode of Bullet Heaven was made possible with a copy of the game provided by East Asia Soft. There's no denying that Ikaruga is a pretty influential game. More than one title has tried to capitalize on a color-based polarity system ever since its debut, with mixed results. On the Nintendo Switch in specific, we can see the kind of stark contrast some of these titles can have, especially since Ikaruga itself is on the platform for direct comparison. Hero Hero was developed by Artax Games and published by East Asia Soft for Nintendo Switch originally on June 7, 2018, but was quickly delisted and relisted on July 30th along its Steam release. With added twists to the polarity mechanics we've seen time and time again, how does Hero Hero hold up? Let's take a look. Hero Hero is a pretty simple game on the outset. Players control the titular Hero's ship with typical 8-way control. The A button fires the ship's main cannon in a rapid-fire manner, but its fire rate can be increased if players can tap the fire button quicker. This becomes handy in areas where crowds of enemies have to be taken out as quickly as possible. The R button changes the player's ship color from red to blue, with player bullets matching the ship's color at that time. Most enemies in the game are either red or blue as well, and they'll be weak to the opposite color the player is. Red enemies are defeated with blue shots, and vice versa. Most enemies are immune to fire of their color, though. Players can also absorb enemy bullets that are the same color they are. If the player is blue, blue enemy fire will be harmless, and vice versa. By and large, this is exactly like Ikaruga's black and white polarity system. If a player is hit with a bullet of the opposite color, though, they will take damage which is indicated in the life stock by a more and more distorted life icon. Three hits in this manner will kill a player, and the current life's health can't be restored. Like Ikaruga, the player can absorb enemy bullets to charge a powerful homing attack known as the Tesla Shock that can be unleashed with the X button once the gauge is full. Unlike Ikaruga, though, only bullets can be absorbed. Lasers, while harmless if the color matches the player's, will not charge this gauge. While this attack is very brief and less impressive than the homing missile barrage in Ikaruga, it does a good job of softening enemy forces and heavily damaging mid-stage and end-stage bosses, or for clearing out a bunch of enemies in a tight situation. This attack can also damage enemies of the same color, as opposed to regular shots. Players can also sometimes find power-ups that will enhance their firepower. These modules will attach to either the front or rear of the ship, depending on which is picked up. They will also change the appearance of the player's ship in addition to enhancing its firepower. The rear module creates a T-shaped bullet pattern that can attack enemies to the side and rear of the craft. Meanwhile, the front module doubles up Hero's main firepower, making for quick kills. But both of these weapons are finite, and the remaining power of either can be found on the left-hand side of the screen. All too often, though, the player will not be able to use them for nearly as long as they'd like, and if they're hit in any sort of way, they lose their power-ups. Around halfway through the game, players gain access to a new attack as well. The gravity drive is charged when absorbing more enemy shots after the Tesla shot contains full power. The gravity drive catches all surrounding enemies and shots, orbits them around Hero's ship, and creates an intense, powerful burst that defeats all captured foes and heavily damages all large enemies, mid-bosses, and stage end bosses when used. It's super handy for taking out bosses in a hurry. Alternatively, the player can also use the Tesla shock without emptying the whole gauge once the charge goes into gravity drive territory. But why it's only introduced in Stage 5 is beyond us. And taking all of this into consideration, there will even be times where players can't even use these abilities, in the name of making the game more challenging. Eh. Finally, players must also be aware of colored hazards in various stages. Energy fields can be traversed if they match the player's color. Meanwhile, purple fields are harmless regardless of color, but change players' shots as they traverse them. Finally, yellow fields can't be passed through at all and will kill a player instantly if touched. They'll also change any shots that pass through them to yellow, which is handy in taking out purple enemies, which are immune to any other color. Enemies can also fire yellow shots, which can't be absorbed and will damage the player regardless of their color. Other mechanics like reflective surfaces also present a puzzle-style challenge to players as well, with bullets of the same color type reflecting. In the same manner that purple and yellow fields change the shot type, so too do purple and yellow panels. The player may also have to contend with environmental structures which can be taken out regardless of the color of the player's shots. So it all sounds pretty solid, and the mechanics do work on a technical, theoretical level, but in practice, Hero Hero suffers greatly due to its overall lack of finesse. The action is slow and plodding, the player ship is clunky, shots are sluggish, and the stages go on and on for way, way too long. This heavily contrasts with Ikaruga's swift ship speed, easily accessed color change input, 
fast rapid fire and pinpoint accurate single fire, as well as a more robust homing attack. Hero Hero is played over the course of nine patients testingly long stages as compared to Ikaruga's perfectly paced five. It also has four different modes, Story, in which players unlock and continue from each stage at their leisure, Normal, in which players start from stage one and make their way through the game on three credits, Arcade, which reduces the credit count to just one, and 1cc mode, which is the same as normal in Arcade, but players can neither continue nor buy lives between stages. Oh right, I guess we should touch on the whole extend thing as well. Hero Hero can be pretty cheap at times, with enemies bum-rushing the player in ways that are often too quick to be dealt with, resulting in a frustrating death. In normal and arcade, players can purchase extra lives to use in the next stage at the cost of their score, to a maximum of three lives. We would have preferred a more traditional extend system that would have allowed for lives to be earned and stocked mid-stage, which could have helped greatly in making better progress for the game, especially with Hero Hero's special brand of challenge. Speaking of challenge, Hero Hero derives most of its difficulty from very basic, movement-based and close-quarters sources, as well as player traps in the final stages. The game will corral players into very tight areas of the screen with either a mixture of red and blue bullets or speedy enemies that can't be evaded. On the one hand, it makes the game harder for novices that like their shooters a bit more difficult, even if said difficulty is on the cheap side. On the other, it also boils the game down to simple memorization, especially with its weak scoring, stiff control, and simple enemy patterns. As such, since no one stage is truly that hard, even intermediate players will no doubt breeze through the game once the unknowns of a fresh, never-before-played stage are discovered and memorized after a few tries. Sadly though, the never-ending stage length combined with frustrating, irritating enemies and obstacles and a control scheme that could definitely have been better, or at the very least, remappable, means that Hero Hero just isn't fun to play and makes a solid push into boring territory. Typically speaking, and with obvious exception, the best shooters fall within that magic 6-7 stage length, and their stages are quite a bit shorter. More enemies and bullets could have worked too, with each stage clocking in at half the length. In the end, beyond the main story mode, there was just no incentive to play the game in any other mode other than checking out their unique features. But even then, there was nothing there to keep what interest we still had. Four modes is a decent number when there are new features or mechanics for players to play around with. Just look at Espeluda 2. But when all the player is getting is less credits and lives and really nothing else, can they really be considered extra modes? The story mode in specific also has a vague 3 metal reward system that gives the player zero feedback as to how they get or have gotten them for each stage. It's baffling. Why not just make an easy, normal, and hard mode like any other shooter and put in a set of standardized in-game achievements that mirror those in the Steam version? It just seems like it would be a better, more streamlined system. Hero Hero isn't exactly a game that will set the world ablaze with its in-depth scoring, since it's all very simple and basic. Basically, outside of regular enemy destruction, which by the way awards very few points, players will get bonus points for killing enemies in rapid succession, starting on the fourth one. As this is happening, a small orb will appear on the screen that collects remnants of felled enemies as long as the chain is in progress. If the chain ends, it will begin to fall off screen. The player's chain score bonus will be applied when this is collected, but will otherwise be lost if it exits the playfield. And uh, that's pretty much it. The story mode is scored stage by stage like a lot of shooters with selectable levels, which is cool and all, but there are no rankings for it. However, Hero Hero does still have an online leaderboard, it just doesn't specify what for. We assume it's for the normal 3 credit non-story mode. This leaderboard is accessible in the options menu by selecting the gear icon in the title screen, but only 5 entries can be seen between the global and friends lists. This is kind of dumb, especially since there's no real way to figure out where a player stacks up compared to the rest of Hero Hero's players, unless they're in the top freaking 5. We pressed every button we could on this freaking controller and nothing came up. 5 entries. That's it. What's up with that? And let's not forget the kicker here, once again, players can buy back the lives that they've lost at the end of a stage in normal and arcade mode by sacrificing a portion of their score. This will take a significant portion of the player's pointage from their total as a result, meaning only a perfect play will get the highest scores. This combination of short-sighted ranking and heavy-handed extend requirements is sure to push players away from the game, even for score. And it's exactly why we've never stuck with anything but the story mode stages. If a shooter falls flat in the gameplay and scoring departments, its presentation can be a saving grace, but not really in Hero Hero's case. First, the good stuff. 
Hero Hero's pixel art style visuals are pretty neat. While the player's ship and most enemies are fairly basic looking and typically very simple, the backgrounds have a good amount of subtle detail that make them something to marvel at. The general UI is also pretty decent, with clear indicators of weapon power and how many of each ship Eero has destroyed. The health of enemy boss ships is also found in this UI, but it is a little out of the way. Everything else is a bit of a mess. The enemy ships have next to no animation to them outside of bigger units. And that can mostly be overlooked, but the character art and cinema pieces in specific are all generally kind of ugly, complete with awkward poses, iffy expressions, and flat elements. Also, why is Eero always holding that stick? He's piloting a starship and reacts in real time, but he's always holding that friggin' stick. Outside of the story sequences between stages, there's something to be said about the story elements within the game itself. These story bits are delivered while the game is in action, and there's no real way to read these while dealing with the game's obstacles or enemies unless, once again, the whole game was committed to muscle memory. Artax has gone on record to say that these elements are presented in areas that are devoid of action, but uh, I don't think so. I guess they forgot about stages 5 and 8, which require a decent amount of attention to keep from biting it. Speaking of story bits, we have to say that the effect used for the radio transmissions almost instantly triggers intense misophonia. It truly bothers me, and I just can't tell you exactly why. All of the other sounds work fairly well, though, even if they are mostly on the simple side. But it does bother me that the explosions in this game sound just like the Ring Attack in the Klonoa series. There were also times when stage hazards were not especially well defined, resulting in deaths we literally didn't see coming. Especially in Stage 8, asteroids can fly behind colored fields and even become completely obscured by enemies. Especially since some background elements looked very similar, it became a tiresome hassle real fast. On the topic of sound, we have to say the tone for Hero Hero's soundtrack absolutely doesn't fit what's going down here. The track's compositions are fine and all, but they're way too upbeat and cheerful for a game in which the protagonist's mother is effectively murdered. The major key and happy vocals in Stage 3 only add to this dichotomy, especially directly after her death. Like, what the hell is this? In addition to the weak story that Eero Hero sports, the scene art is reused constantly and Eero in particular is exceptionally irritating on every level. How many times does this guy say, um? A whole lot, as it turns out. Ugh. In the end, Eero Hero is still playable. It's still a game that some, we're sure, will genuinely invest some time into. But it's definitely not for everyone, and it certainly doesn't hold a candle to a legend like Igaruga. Perhaps it's fate that Eero Hero was announced at nearly the same time as Arx and Raijin, which is itself one of the greatest disappointments in the history of Bullet Heaven. But while Eero Hero isn't quite on that level, it's definitely not fantastic, to say the least. So, let's see how it stacks up. The control itself in Hero Hero is fine enough to traverse the screen, but it's still clunky, unmappable, and rapid fire is slow enough that regular old humans can fire faster through rapid button presses. When it comes to challenge, players will die a lot, but it's almost completely by design. Hero Hero is a game that is almost strictly played from memory thanks to its cheap enemies and misleading and hidden stage hazards. Not from real skill like in games such as Ikaruga. Hero Hero has 9 stages, but their length combined with restart after restart with every loss of the player's 3 lives causes the game to vastly overstay its welcome, even just in story mode. Hero Hero looks decent for a pixel art style game, but the ships are on the simple side and the Steam version has better lighting. Meanwhile, the character art and story scenes look pretty eh, and the story scenes are often reused. The UI is cool though. The sound effects here are terrible to average at best, with radio transmissions being the worst offender in the game, and they happen often. And while the soundtrack is actually very well produced, it just doesn't fit such a dark storyline with rare exception. All of Hero Hero's unique aspects seem to be hampered by an equally questionable implementation. It lacks the finesse of other similar style games, especially the vastly superior Ikaruga, and its scoring leaves a lot to be desired. In addition, its four modes are really just difficulty tweaks rather than full-on variations. 
Hero Hero is about 13 US dollars, which makes its value a little questionable stacked up to better titles. Ikaruga, for example, is only $7 more. For those that want to try this one for themselves though, it's not a terrible price, it's just not an especially good one. The Steam version is only $10 though. Hero Hero is a game that had us wondering when enough was enough for capturing footage for this review. A number of fixes have already made it into the game, so we imagine more could possibly be done. In specific, leaderboard fixes, a faster rapid shot, longer special weapon times, control remapping, and higher visibility hazards are high on our wishlist. Hmm, it's more of a novel. As of this review though, Hero Hero isn't a game we'd classify as particularly fun, and it gets a 2.25 out of 5. If you're still interested in Hero Hero, it can be purchased on the Nintendo eShop for about 13 US dollars or on Steam for about 10 bucks. Buh, that was... Uh, that was the thing. What lies in store for Bullet Heaven next? How about Defenders of Ekron for PlayStation 4? That sounds like a plan to us.